Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're gonna to start things off with some interesting Starship updates. Followed by some news concerning Starship's Raptor engines, we'll dive into some news concerning SpaceX's maritime fleet, then Starlink will be the final topic of conversation before we end with today's honorable mention. So let's begin. So SpaceX seems to be hyping up their fan base as they begin their ascent out of this current lull of launches and news we find ourselves in. They just published their updated version of the Starship Super Heavy animation to their YouTube page. And if it looks familiar, that's because it was played during Elon's recent Starship presentation. I believe this is the fourth version they've done now. SpaceX has filed their FCC application for special temporary authority concerning the upcoming 20 kilometer test flight of Starship from Boca Chica. However, there is a bit of confusion surrounding the listed dates. I found two filings that SpaceX submitted. The first requested dates are November 15th to May 15th, but the second and most recent one lists the dates of October 13th to April 13th. Both were signed on October 14th, so my guess is that it's probably the same filing, but was recently changed. This or these filings were made specifically for the Mark 1 Starship in Boca Chica, but rings are once again being stacked in Coco for what is probably the Mark 4 prototype. A test stand at SpaceX's McGregor, Texas facility is being renovated in preparation for future Raptor engine tests. This specific tripod stand hasn't been used by SpaceX in years, but Elon confirmed its new purpose on Twitter, writing that it will be a Raptor vertical test stand. Hopefully it allows some simplifications of Raptor design, as pump shaft wear and drainage is better in this vertical configuration. This comes as Raptor development output is expected to rapidly increase as more Starship prototypes are constructed. When asked about an update to the ETA of the first Raptor vacuum test, Elon said that a suboptimal version 1 Raptor vac is a couple months away. On October 9th, Elon unsolicitedly tweeted the name of SpaceX's third drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas which hadn't been spoken of since he first made the announcement that they were actually making one back in early 2018. This leads us to believe that we could start seeing the very first images of this booster catching ship real soon. But what it will be used for exactly remains a mystery, since the West Coast drone ship has since been moved to the East Coast to support Falcon operations. This ship, just read the instructions, is currently undergoing maintenance in Louisiana, but it's being speculated that these upgrades could be to support Starship tests. Fairing catching ships Gomez Chief and Gomez Tree have been receiving updates of their own as they prep for their first tag team mission to catch both halves of a Falcon 9 fairing. Gomez Chief, the newer of the two, has had his new arms and net installed and was spotted making practice runs out to sea. The current educated guess is that the November 11th launch of JCSAT-18 could be the mission for the first double catch attempt. Yes, it could be a Starlink mission, but none of those dates are set in stone yet. But speaking of Starlink, Harry Stoltz found that the FCC has filed for 30,000 new satellites on SpaceX's behalf. I tried to follow the trail for these filings, but to be totally honest, there was a lot of information and I just got bored trying to read through it. So I'll leave a link in the description and you can be my guest to look through it yourself. But this massive uptick in satellites could mean that SpaceX is hellbent on using Starship for their future Starlink deployments. But anyway, now it's time for today's very, very, very special honorable mention. All right, so as you know, these honorable mention segments are reserved for non-SpaceX related topics. But this time, my hand has been forced to make an exception. See, a few weeks ago, it broke that SpaceX had sent out buyout letters to Boca Chica residents to make room for future activities. And I had my lawyer slash spouse on the show to discuss what this could eventually lead to. And if you remember, in her no uncertain tone of voice, Carrie predicted that SpaceX would continue negotiations with the residents, despite these non-negotiable terms listed in the letter. But in their letter to the residents, they specifically said this wasn't a negotiating thing. Everything's negotiable. <laughs> this is the lawyer saying it. So they're bluffing. SpaceX is bluffing. We're calling you out, SpaceX. What? Well, this week, Business Insider released an article that gave their readers an inside look at what went down behind the scenes during Elon's Starship presentation. And despite the fact I was in attendance and even spoke with some of the locals that evening, I had no idea that this was happening at the time. So several locals who were given buyout letters were invited to attend the presentation, but during the five minute break before the Q&A, they were shuttled off to the nearby Stargate building to wait for Elon to meet with them. According to the locals I spoke with since, they felt betrayed by this late night, last minute meeting with Elon that robbed them of their opportunity to raise their concerns in front of the media during the Q&A. Frankly, I think this would have been a really smart strategic move on the chessboard by SpaceX if this was really their intent. But the thing is, SpaceX only opened the Q&A questions to members of the media, not locals. Trust me, I was right there as a member of the media and the line to the microphone was long and full of journalists. 
But anyway, after the Q&A, Elon met with the locals in a private setting, and after Elon explained to them why SpaceX chose the Boca Chica location as their future spaceport, the locals dogpiled on top of him with their words. But my good buddy, Ray Pointer, who is really just one of the nicest and most reasonable dudes I've ever met, was quoted as saying Elon stood there respectfully and absorbed the blows. And when specifically asked about the buyout offers being quote, non-negotiable, Elon admitted that it is negotiable. And when asked about the possibility of eminent domain being used in the future against any residents that refuse all offers, Elon responded simply that he didn't want to do that. But I think we can all read between the lines on that response. Man, if you go back and watch episodes 51 and 53 and listen to what Carrie says will happen, she nailed it. And that's why she's the breadwinner. But it doesn't end there. Elon was asked if those who enjoy being SpaceX's neighbor could stick around for the long term and just be bused to Brownsville and out of harm's way during Starship launches. And Elon said that they probably could do that. But between you and me and Carrie, that will never happen. SpaceX won't want to babysit any locals when they got a, you know, a really important business to run. You know, I do have a ton to comment on about all this, but the fact is I've already done it. And if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts concerning this meeting, check out my 30 minute addendum video to last week's episode 56. It's on Patreon, there's a link in the description. You know, I do feel it's important to add that toward the end of the meeting, it started to lighten up a little bit and the locals and Elon were getting along better and even some pictures were taken, but I've reached out to some of them since then and the locals still feel pretty betrayed by the whole thing. But anyway, all of this to say just one thing, the wife was right, what else is new? And since she made her demand perfectly clear that when she's proven right, she gets to be an honorable mention. If I'm right and they get another letter, I want to be the honorable mention. Without further delay, I give you the love of my life. Hey Carrie, guess what? What? You're the honorable mention. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. If you made it to the end of this one, let me know down in the comments. A very special thank you to all my eccentric patrons who support this channel. They are the reason why the public gets to enjoy these little SpaceX updates. If you'd like to show your support, there's a link in the description. Thank you guys for tuning in and until the next one, Godspeed.